Hey, welcome back. Today, I want to respond to a question that several people have asked on one of my previous videos, where I showed how to project a 3D model onto a cylinder. And the question everyone is asking is, how do you wrap a model all the way around the entire cylinder? So I thought I should make a video about it. And to begin, the first thing I did was an image search for a tileable pattern. And some of these look pretty cool, like this one right here. But this type of image gave me problems because of all these sharp points everywhere. So if you want to use something like this, you'll probably have to spend a lot of time in Photoshop editing the image and fooling around with it to get it to work. So I kept looking and I ended up picking this one. And then after a little bit of Photoshop work, I ended up with this. And if you watched my previous videos on the subject of turning images into 3D models, then you know I used Inkscape to convert raster images to vector graphics. But for anyone who doesn't know, Inkscape is a free program for creating vector graphics. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. So here I have my image open in Inkscape. And to convert it to a vector graphic, I'll click on the image to select it. Then I'll come up to the Path menu and select Trace Bitmap. And now you can see the preview image over here on this side. But if your image doesn't have a lot of contrast, you might need to adjust this threshold slider. You see, if I decrease the threshold, the image disappears. But if I increase it, the image will start to appear. So I'll leave it here at 450 and then I'll click Apply. Then I can switch to the Layers tab. Select the original image and delete it. And now I'll go to the File menu, save a copy, and I want to save as plain SVG format. And then click Save. But I already have mine saved, so I'll cancel this and jump over to Blender. So now over here in Blender, I'll hit Shift A and add a cylinder. And for this demonstration, I'll set the radius to 0.5, the depth to 3, and the vertex count to 96. And this is just going to be for reference, so I'll hide it until I need it. Next, I'll hit Shift A and add a curve circle. And I'll set the radius to 0.5 to match the cylinder. And for the sides, I'm going to set this to 30. The more sides you have, the smoother your model is going to be. And I found that 30 works pretty well for this model. So I'll accept that, and I'll hide this circle for now also. And now I'll hit the number 7 key on the number pad to switch to top view. Then I'll go to the File menu, Import, and choose Scalable Vector Graphics. And then I'll select my SVG file and Import. Then I'll select it, right-click, and set Origin to Geometry. Then I'll hit Shift S and choose Selection to Cursor, and I'll rotate it up 90 degrees. And now I'll unhide the cylinder, hit the number 1 key to switch to Front View, and I'll scale the pattern up until it's roughly the same size as the cylinder. And it looks like 5.15 on X and Z should work. So now I'll hit Control A and apply Scale, and then I'll hide the cylinder again. And then I'll come over to the Materials panel and delete this black material. So now I need to do a few things before I can wrap this thing around the circle. First, I'll come over to the Object Data Properties and open up the Geometry section, and I'll set the Extrude Amount to 0.003 to give it some thickness, but I think that's a little too thick, so let's try 0 0.002. And I think that looks pretty good, so I'll go ahead and right-click and convert to mesh. So now I have a model, but if I switch to edit mode, you see the topology is awful, and this is not going to work for wrapping around the circle. So I'll switch back to object mode. Then I'll go to the Modifiers panel and add a Remesh modifier. And I'll set the method to Sharp. And I'll set the Octree Depth to 10. 
But depending on your model, you might be able to get away with eight or nine, or you might have to go higher to 11 or 12. It just depends on your pattern. You might also have to disable or enable this remove disconnected option if parts of your pattern aren't looking right. But I think 10 looks pretty good for this pattern, so I'll stick with these settings and I'll apply the modifier. And now if I switch to edit mode, you see the topology is looking pretty good. And if you want to, you could go through and select all these edges on the sides and remove them since they're not necessary. But I'm not going to do that. I'll just switch back to object mode and unhide the circle. And now I'll apply a curve modifier to the pattern. And I'll click on this eyedropper right here, and then I'll select the circle as the curve object. And now you can see the pattern is wrapping around the circle, but it's not wrapping all the way around. So I'll just use the scale tool to adjust it until the ends come together. And if you hold down the shift key while you're scaling, it makes this a little easier. So now that the pattern is wrapping around it correctly, I'll apply the curve modifier, hide the circle, and unhide the cylinder. And I'll scale the pattern out just a little bit until it fits around the outside of the cylinder. And then I'll hide the cylinder, and there you go. But if I switch to edit mode, you can see right here where the ends are overlapping, which is a little bit of a problem. So you will have to do a little bit of cleanup, but it's not a big deal. Just double click on this face right here, and that will select the entire row. And then I can hit X and delete faces. And then I'll do the same thing for this row. Select them and delete them. And then I have these faces inside here. So I'll select one of these faces and then hit Shift G and choose Coplanar to select all the faces. Then I can hit X and delete faces. And then I'll do the same thing again for these faces on this side. And then down here I'll have to select these that are not coplanar and delete them also. And then once I have all the overlapping faces deleted, I'll switch to edge selection mode. And then I'll double click on this edge. And then hold down the shift key and double click on this edge. And then I can come up to the edge menu and select bridge edge loops. And then I'll have to do the same thing here in this middle section. And then again down here in this bottom section. So now that I'm done with all of that, I'll switch back to object mode. And there you go. So that's about it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And if you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.